Schedule A is your itemized deductions. All right. So every year when you do your tax return, you have a choice between itemized deductions and the standard deduction. For 2024, the standard deduction, if you are filing single, is $14,600. That means you can earn $14,600 and not pay any federal income taxes. If you are married, filing jointly, that amount is $29,200. So anybody with an income of under $29,200 does not pay income tax, at least federal income tax. That's what the standard deduction means. However, if you have enough itemized deductions that it is more than that $14,600 or $29,200, you can fill out Schedule A and take that higher itemized deduction instead. So what are itemized deductions? Well, all you got to do is go to Schedule A and you will see, okay, the first category is medical and dental expenses, okay? And this is limited to the amount above 7.5% of your income. So if you're making $300,000, only the amount above $21,000 that you spent on medical and dental expenses or $22,500 that you spent on medical and dental expenses can go on Schedule A as an itemized deduction. So for most high earners, they usually don't get much here, but you know who might? People who are paying for like in vitro fertilization. You know, you might drop 30 or 40 or $50,000 in a year on in vitro. And, uh, and that'll get you into the category where you can deduct some of that as a medical and dental expense on your Schedule A. All right, the next category is taxes, okay? And so that is state and local taxes, um, and that can be uh, uh, sales taxes as well, and real estate taxes. The problem here is this is limited to $10,000, and many of you pay far more than $10,000 in state and local taxes. Um, there are some workarounds in some states. If you pay your state taxes through your business, a lot of times you can get around this $10,000 limit. It becomes a deduction to your business. And of course, your business then passes less income on to you. And then you get a credit on your personal taxes for that. That's the way it works now in Utah. And I don't know, it might be 30 states or something now that will allow you to deduct more taxes than, than, than that $10,000. But on Schedule A, it's $10,000. The next category is interest paid. And the main type of interest on here is mortgage interest. You've heard buying a house is a tax break, right? It's a tax deduction. Well, what's deductible? The property taxes are deductible under the tax section and the mortgage interest is deductible. There is a limitation on how large of a mortgage you can get and still have it be deductible. Don't quote me on this. I think it's $750,000. Once the mortgage is bigger than that, uh, the interest is not deductible. Well, the interest on the first $750,000 is, but not above and beyond that. But these days, if you got a new mortgage and you got an interest rate of seven or 8%, that's a lot of money, right? The interest on a $700,000 mortgage at 8% is $56,000 a year. That's a big old tax deduction. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean you're coming out ahead because it's deductible. You still got to pay the $56,000, but at least you can do it with pre-tax money. Uh, the next category on Schedule A is gifts to charity. You've heard that gifts to charity are tax deductible. That is not true unless you itemize. If you're not itemizing, you can give hundreds or even thousands of dollars to charity. And uh, it's not helping your tax situation at all. It's helping the charity. It's probably helping your soul, but it's not helping your tax bill. Um, there's no real limit on that. Uh, that's not entirely true. I think there is a limit that it's different for cash and securities. I want to say it's 30% of your gross income for cash. I want to say, no, for securities and 60% for cash or something like that. It's a pretty big number, right? If you're making two or three or $400,000 and you're giving away even tens of thousands of dollars to charity each year, um, it, it, it's all going to be deductible. But if for some reason you give away like a million dollars to charity, it might all not all be deductible. Uh, that year. I think you can carry it forward and use it in future years. Um, but the point is, um, there is a limitation on that. It's just pretty high. It's not like the tax limitation. Um, casualty and theft losses go on there. If you had your bicycle stolen, you can add that onto your Schedule A. 
um, and uh, a few other minor things. But um, you know, that's basically Schedule A. It's mostly ten thousand dollars in taxes, uh, your mortgage interest, and gifts to charity. If that amount is more than fourteen thousand six hundred or twenty nine thousand two hundred, then you itemize. If not, you take the standard deduction and uh, and consider it a nice little gift from the IRS. Uh, either way, those deductions uh, plug in on line 12, which is near the bottom of the first page on your 1040 and are subtracted from your adjustable gross income. Um, and, uh, and then you get your taxable income. And that's what your tax bill is calculated on, is your taxable income. Hope that's helpful for those who, uh, who don't really understand how that itemized deduction thing uh, actually works. The hosts of the White Coat Investor are not licensed accountants, attorneys, or financial advisors. This podcast is for your entertainment and information only. It should not be considered professional or personalized financial advice. You should consult the appropriate professional for specific advice relating to your situation.